The real economy is still weak. That hasn't changed. What has changed is the Fed has been actively pumping up the markets again. The financial analysts have been salivating at this since the Fed shut down QE3. Now investors see this as a free pass until at least April while the Fed keeps this going. They won't be able to stop it unless the ECB and the BOJ pick up the pace, so that remains to be seen. Without their willingness to inflate their currency, stocks would be decimated. The question is, will they persist forever? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to talk about helicopter money, one of my favorite topics, and yours as well. I'm going to get into some subjects that I do believe are really critical to understand at this time. So we're going to look at what's going on with the repo situation, the Federal Reserve. I'm going to talk about what's happening in the markets, and you can see it has been an incredible year, there's no doubt about it. It. and then we're going to look at the real economy in a global way. I'm going to show you things that largely are irrelevant to the mainstream media. They're never going to show you this data, but it's so important. This article out of Bloomberg is so important to read. I'm going to only touch on a few points, but you have to read this article. This is a must read. Wall Street sleuths are wondering whether the Federal Reserve is quietly doing more to calm the US repo market than just the headline grabbing liquidity injections that have captivated observers for months. They're talking about something that goes a level deeper, and I thought it would be interesting to bring this up at the beginning of the video. The New York Fed runs something called the Foreign Reserve Repo Pool, a place where other nation's central banks can park cash. The amount outstanding has shrunk by 18% since the peak in mid-September. A reduction fits with the Fed's goal of building up reserves in the banking system to keep the repo market orderly following the tumult of three months ago. It smells to me that it's a little more Fed-driven. When foreign central banks tap the foreign reserve repo pool, it sucks reserves out of the system, working against the central bank's effort to replenish the supply. One of the reasons why repo went haywire three months ago is that the reserves or bank's excess cash parked at the Fed got too scarce. We all know that by now, I'm sure, but check this out. As a result, the central bank began temporarily replenishing reserves, as they like to call it, via overnight and term repo operations as well as their $60 billion a month in treasury bills. And at the bottom here, but next year will test whether the Fed can end its interventions without chaos. Re-emerging Powell recently said that the Fed isn't trying to eliminate all volatility from the markets. However, if the repo market is erratic, it signals the Fed doesn't have good control of the financial system's plumbing. That's something policymakers and the broader market can't tolerate. Right now, we see that the market is pricing in 100% perfection. This is going on all levels. The repo market has to be perfect. We have to see them buying up the treasury bills. We have to see the increased stimulus coming from all levels. Open market operations need to take place to make sure those interest rates stay put. They are willing to accept the current level here if the market weakens a little bit of course they're going to ask for those to be further subdued we're going to see what happens with that as well as the rest of the world they need to follow suit Reserve repo falling, usage at the Fed's foreign reserve repo pool has declined since September. This just shows you that on this Bloomberg chart to give you an idea of where it has fallen. Despite the fact that both of these situations, regular repos we've talked about previously, and this one as well, there shouldn't be a problem, there shouldn't be an issue, but here we are. This gives you a more recent breakdown of a chart that I've shown you before from September up until today. The total outstanding repos and the T-bills, hundreds of billions of dollars worth just to get to where we are right now. And obviously risk is definitely on the table. Central banks are cutting like it's a crisis. This chart out of Bank of America just shows you the net global central bank hikes versus cuts. There are 51 cuts according to this. And you can see how unbelievable this is. It's unprecedented to cut this much in a time when we are being told everything is fine. 
doesn't seem to be the case. Well, we have a little change of pace because Sweden's central bank on Thursday raised the country's interest rate to zero for the first time since the beginning of 2015. Now, of course, they were at that level just below the line at minus 0.25, but this just gives you an idea of where some central banks are going. They park them right at that zero line and they are somewhat similar to what Norway has done, increasing just a little bit. I believe Norway was at 1.5%, somewhere around that range, but it just shows you that globally interest rates are extremely low. Even in the situations where they have actually increased their interest rates, it doesn't appear to be anywhere near where they were before the financial crisis. That is something that is considered to be the new normal, but it's not without consequence. Since 1988, the MSCI All Country World Index multiple expansion has only been greater in 2009. So it's as if this mass crisis occurred and suddenly this is the growth afterward. Yet, that's not exactly what happened. Now, of course, we know that 2018, especially in the fourth quarter, was a terrible year. That's why 2019 looks so fantastic because you're coming off of an extremely bad quarter right until those last few days of 2018. And then the remainder of the year and onward was looking so fantastic. This is a chart that just gives you a breakdown. All country world index is important because then we're looking at so many different countries as opposed to just the S&P 500. Now this just gives you a comparison between the S&P 500 and the global PMI. This here shows the weakness because the global PMI is right at that level where it could go either way. The trend may appear to be going up here it all depends on the data in the coming months so we'll see what happens obviously the stock market has gone up considerably but we'll see what happens with manufacturing because you look at certain things like the ism the different freight indexes and so on and that looks extremely weak i've shown you that data many times before we're at a crossroads right now with this particular chart so of course i will give you an update on that in the coming weeks the coming months Buyers return to the riskiest junk bonds. We were told so many times before, you don't have to worry about 2008 ever happen again because we've got it under control. We put the safety measures in place and everything will be just fine. But if you actually look at it, if you actually spend the moment to understand what these investors are getting themselves into, what these corporations have created, this is a Frankenstein that cannot be controlled. Because risk is on right now, these fund managers are saying, hey, let's get some of that garbage into our portfolio and let's make it happen. Let's just put some money in there and get that return. Then I want to show you what's going on with the different economies around the world. This happens to be the US and I'll, I'll spend a bit more time on this one, but I'll show the other ones as well. Hardly the greatest economy ever. This shows you where the GDP is should be you know you get this dotted line that's in here behind the solid line and essentially if we were to follow this all the way through this is where gdp should be this is where the growth should be all along however after the financial crisis that really did change you can see here that there has been a you can see the trend line had been modified permanently and now slower growth lower growth Growth is the norm. Despite the fact that we have added extreme levels of stimulus, whether that comes in the form of something like TARP, whether you are seeing that with the QE, the low interest rates, and so on, none of that has translated into growth. That didn't happen. And that's the issue that we need to be presented with. But unfortunately, mainstream won't cover it. Most investors don't know what the hell's going on. So this is what we get. This is the same situation in the Eurozone. You could see the slow growth that has been persistent. That again applies to different countries as well. But I'm just trying to show you here that this is going on all over the world. Germany happens to be one example. Take a look at this 2008. It comes down, never able to recover. Italy is looking absolutely terrible. They've been in some serious economic problems and this just gives you an idea of where it has gone or not gone over the past few decades. 
Greece is actually much worse. You can see their GDP has slowed down to such terrible levels. The growth just simply isn't there. The debt, however, has certainly been abundant. The chart that we're seeing here is of Japan, and because the 80s were a time in which Japan was growing like nothing we have ever seen before, that trend line was broken a long time ago. They have never been able to recover from this in any respect. Their stock market, the economy, and so on. I just did a video about this, and I think I'll link to it at the end of this current video. It just gets into so much detail about what's going on in Japan. I just read more stats today about Japan, in fact, that would have been good to add to that video. But what we're looking at here is this problem they cannot fix. It is not possible unless they allow the economic detox to occur, which they won't. There's no chance in this working out well. China has an issue as well, is dealing with these problems too, and you could see it on their chart, though their growth has obviously been a lot better than places in the Eurozone, for example. And really quickly, the Richmond Fed Manufacturing Average Workweek Index is down in the gutter, minus 15. So the trend is definitely there. I'm just going to get my highlighter to show you that from 2018 into 2019, we have seen this weakness in so many different statistics. This happens to be just one of them. These are a whole bunch of stats all in one chart, which is great. You're looking at the Philadelphia Fed Business Outlook Survey, the U.S. Empire State Manufacturing Survey, the Richmond, Kansas City, Dallas, Market News International, Chicago Business Barometer, so many on this one. And you will see the trend is very clear, down, down, down. It is weak. It is not what they have told us. And unfortunately for the Fed, they cannot use their QE4 to get out of this mess. It doesn't fix anything. It might cover up the problems temporarily. It might make things look good on the outside, but the inside is rotting at its core and we've got big issues. They were trying to tell us that this shopping season has been so fantastic. Best shopping day ever in history. The consumer is loving it. And of course, the consumer is 70% of the U.S economy therefore everything is just fine well there are a lot of information that would worry those who are paying attention look at the credit cards for instance we have people still paying the debt from last year because they did this ridiculous black friday shopping and of course boxing day and all this stuff still paying that off one year later if you tell me that's a good economy if you tell me that's a sign of strength we got a whole different opinion about this subject top tier malls are the latest victim of retail headwinds this article basically just goes into show you what we've covered so many times before breaks it all down gives you the stats related to it i'm going to end the video there if you found it informative hit the thumbs up button when you hit the thumbs up button you are supporting this channel i do appreciate that very much if you want to learn how to sell on amazon i have a free e-course to teach you step by step how to do it there is no charge you just sign up there at the amazongps.com if you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything you need. The Foundation, the History, the Asset Classes, Making Money, Reducing Your Debt, and so much more. Check it out at the link. If you want the audiobook, it's available at themoneygps.com. If you want to know exactly what's going on in Japan and how this is really just a foreshadowing for other countries like the United States, check out this video. I'll see you there.